Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, and welcome to today's video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about this little guy. The Acerd Ball Python, or just the regular Ball Python. I don't know how to pronounce that first part. But anyways, <laughs> these little guys are pretty interesting. And snakes are in general, you know, the way they move and stuff. And we're going to get into all that. So let's start it off. So the way snakes move, right? Snakes actually move by moving their flexible body so they have a, a spine that connects all the way at the end of their tail right of the end of their body and they have little parts that jit out little bones and each bone has a muscle connected to it so the muscle will move around right or move in a certain way will push the body forward and that's how they actually move they use a bunch of those little muscles that are connected to the uh bones right and that's how they move. It's pretty interesting. And they have a bunch of different ways to move. Like on the main one, serpentine. You know what I mean? Where you, where they go like up, down, up, down, up, down. In that formation. There's a bunch of them. If you want to go look them up, go ahead. I'm not going to be talking about that right now. Uh, but what now I do want to talk about is their lifespan. They live 20 to 30 plus years. Which is crazy, right? They're pretty long. They're pretty long lived. You know what I mean? Not as much as us, but... You know, that's pretty insane to have for an animal or like a pet having a 20 to 30 long year uh, animal. It's pretty crazy. Uh, their size could average around like 3 to 5 feet. So they're not really that big. They're not really that small. You know what I mean? They're just like kind of just a little something. And these ball pythons are non-venomous. So you don't have to worry about any of that. That's why a lot of people like to take care of them as like pets and stuff. You know what I mean? Where they were located, right, is West and Central Africa. But now they're obviously everywhere in the world because people sold them. So they were located at West and Central Africa. They usually are, right? But you could find them in Arizona and stuff like that, or somewhere in the U.S. or somewhere, anywhere on the other side too, which is fine, right? Now, when these ball pythons hatch out, they're approximately like ten inches in length. So they're not that big, you know what I mean? They're less than a foot, so it's pretty small when they first hatch out. But like many species of snakes, right, males tend to be smaller than females, right? So adult males average around like 2 to 3 feet, while females average around 4 to 5 feet. So if you see a very long, you know, a very long uh, python, just know it's going to be a female. And if it's a little shorter, then it's going to be a male, right? Now, like I said earlier, right, they have 20 to 30 plus years of lifespan, but there have been re records of ball pythons, like, living over 40 years old. That is, like, half a life, which is crazy. You know what I mean? For having as a pet, you're going to have that boy in for the rest of your life. Sheesh. But when having your ball python enclosure, make sure to remember that they are native to warm, so tropical climates. So hatchlings can be kept in a rack, like hatchlings can be kept in a rack or, or a 10 gallon tank, right? And adults can be housed in a 40 quart racks or a 36 length times 18 width times 12 height tanks, you know what I mean? And these ball pythons are actually known as the royal pythons because it said that African tribe leaders would wear the snakes like they were jewelry. So it's pretty cool. I have a little backstory behind them, you know what I mean? It's pretty cool the way if that's true like the natives would wear them i wonder what the snakes would do you know what i mean <laughs> but anyways off topic no ball pat no ball python is actually alike right so just like snowflakes ball pythons have unique patterns and colors that vary even within the same morph. so like if you want to find a unique ball python they're all unique which is cool so like if you're seeing a ball python that might be the only ball python that looks like that which is cool. You know what I mean? There might not be any other ball python that looks lo exactly like that. So it's pretty another cool thing like to have as a pet. You know what I mean? Which is pretty cool. And there are hundreds of morphs available, right? As pets. So morphs prefer to the various colors and pattern. And mutations such as albino, lacustic, and ernithristic. Sorry if I pronounced any of those words wrong. But... Yeah, so they all they're all ranging from like different colors and patterns and a bunch of different stuff. So 
if you find a ball python that you like, I uh, suggest getting it if you're trying to get a ball python because that may be the best one you can find. You know what I mean? And ball pythons are opportunistic feeders, so that means they'll eat whenever, right? So you, you can't like just put food in there and wait for them to eat. They'll eat whenever they have the chance because in the wild they do not know when their next meal is, right? So this could lead to obesity when kept in captivity. So you shouldn't want to, you shouldn't want to like put too much food in your ball python's enclosure and make sure that he just gets food. And speaking of food, however you want to feed them is about uh, like every seven to ten days, right? And appropriate size ro rodent for like a little python for a little hatchling and juveniles, right? But appropriate size meaning the same size as the largest girth of the ball python. So it means the largest of the little ball pythons, right? And normally the ball python's midsection, right? But do not handle the ball do not handle the ball python for at least a day after feeding so it can properly digest digest the meal, right? So you shouldn't wanna like hold it or anything. You know what I mean? You shouldn't wanna carry it all around, do a bunch of stuff with it. Because we need to you need your bite python to digest the food properly and know if you don't have let that happen it will mess up the ball python, right? It will cause damage to their health. So you don't want to do that, and you definitely don't want to do that to your pet ball python. So keep that in mind if you ever have a ball python pet as a pet. Now, feed the adult ball pythons, right, every two, one to two weeks, right? Because ball pythons are known for going off feed, right, during winter months. So do not be alarmed if your ball python stops feeding for a month or two. So simply just keep an eye on them. Make sure they're all good, right? Make sure their overall condition is good. And they generally don't eat during the shed cycle. So if you see them shedding, if they're going through a shed cycle, uh, you I wouldn't suggest giving them food because they're not going to eat it at all. You know what I mean? They might eat it, but like they sh probably shouldn't eat it because they're shedding and stuff. And you want to provide always like clean water. You always want to provide fresh water because ball pythons actually need water, right? So you should make sure you check up on it daily because the snakes might get it dirty because they go in there and clean themselves in there and stuff like that. And they're pretty cool because like they don't really do a lot. You could just kind of watch them. You could have people over and watch them. But uh that's kind of what they do they kind of like slither around and stuff but i want to talk about their temperature and humidity right now provide providing a heat gradient with lows in the mid to high 70s and a basking spot of 88 to 89 degrees sheesh i can't speak but 88 to 93 degrees fahrenheit is very important right because they are cold-blooded like reptiles any reptile so you want to keep their humidity like around 50 to 60 percent and you want to keep the degrees in the high 70s and their ba basking spot in like 88 to 93 degrees so you want to keep that in mind because you need uh you need heat for them you need a lot of heat for their enclosure or else they will die because they are cold blooded cold blooded sheesh but they are cold blooded and they need warm temperatures to stay alive that's why a lot of reptiles are only seen in hot areas because all of them are cold blooded. Now, humans are warm blooded, so we don't live usually in the more hotter areas. If we did, we would be adapted and have more cool blood, you know what I mean? But we don't, we usually hang around a little bit of cooler temperatures. I mean, obviously not anymore because there's millions of people living in deserts, but that's because of air conditioners and stuff like that. But Anyways, getting back on topic, you want to include, you want to put moss, right? You want to put a bunch of moss in your ball python's uh, enclosure to ensure a little bit of humidity, right? To help control it and maintain it. So you could have golden sphanium moss. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Green sphanium moss, or etc. etc. Sorry if I pronounced those names wrong, but you want to have some type of moss in there, right? But Anyways, if you do want lighting in your enclosure, I mean, it's not necessary at all, but it can be used. Uh, however, it can only be used up 12 hours a day because too much lighting can be stressful on the ball python. And you don't want a stressful ball python because they won't really do much and it might even affect their physical health, right? their, their body health. So you don't want to do any of that. And 
you always want to provide a safe place uh, for your ball python. So you'll see at the end of the video, he'll go back in there after he's done slithering around. But you always want to provide a safe little area that he can hop in or hide in. So he'll stay safe. He'll feel safe because if you don't have a little area, they might go crazy, right? And they might uh, affect the overall health of your reptile, reptile, right? So ball pythons need a secure dark cave to hide in, right? So they could retreat in order to reduce stress and feel safe. Because they, they, if they have too much stress, it will affect their physical health. So you want them to have a little area that they can hide in and they'll feel comfortable in, right? So after all the necessaries, ball pythons enclosures have a variety of decor that could help with the enrichment. So spider wood, graphite, and driftwood are popular climbing implements to provide a different texture and aid in shelling. You know what I mean? So like natural stones, a bunch of stuff, whatever you want really, you could put in your ball python, but you you could just add like little sticks that they could climb on little rocks that they could stay in you know what i mean stuff like that you want to make sure the ball python is very nice and secure and they don't have any problems with their enclosure so i want to give you some facts about that right because they're really interesting these ball pythons and a lot of other snakes and it's cool because the like i was saying earlier they have a unique pattern on each ball python which is crazy so like it's like you might only see that ball python ever right you know what i mean unless someone else takes it like that's the only type of pattern that was there so it's interesting because they have also have like a 20 to 30 year lifespan so if you're looking for a very long life pet i suggest getting one of these but if you're looking for a short term do not get one of these at all these guys will be here for a very long time but uh yeah i hope you guys did enjoy this video there's all i got to say for this but if you did be sure to give this video a like maybe you know comment down below what you think of the video uh subscribe for more content like this and hit that bell to stay updated on any new content like this that we post so i'm gonna let this guy you're gonna see this guy just roam around for a little bit and that'll be the end of the video see you guys later